How's it going, everyone? Hope your week was good. We definitely saw some sell off in the quantum market. So we're going to look at a bunch of different quantum stocks today. So this week, quantum stocks saw a pretty significant price correction from their all time highs. We're going to take a look at what that looks like on the chart and what I'm expecting. And if there's further downside or what there is ahead, I'll try to make my best prediction. So we're going to look at a bunch of stocks, including Quantum Emotion, Churchill Capital with their SPAC merger with Inflection, IonQ, Rigetti, D-Wave, CLSQ, and BTQ. It's all Quantum, Quantum Bonanza. We're also going to do a preview of the Quantum Plus AI conference, which I'm attending. So I'm currently packing for, but I wanted to get on because this is my last opportunity to do a studio video. I'll be traveling for the next week. So this is the last chance I would get to do a video here for the main channel. And then also a very important milestone is coming up for the channel. I'm, I'm just over here on the Quantum Bull YouTube channel and we have 9.99K subscribers. So we were almost at 10,000. So if a couple people subscribe, that marks a big milestone for the channel because we started this channel in January. So 10,000 subscribers. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, thank you for being here and I'm excited to get into this video. So let's jump right in. Okay, so this Quantum Plus AI conference, we are, so the Quantum Bull along with AI Insider, Quantum Insider, CIO Review, the Quantum Bull is a media sponsor. And we have CLSQ is a diamond sponsor. And we know that the speakers in this conference are pretty awesome. We're gonna get to hear from a lot of big quantum companies, including QERA, Quantinuum is going to be there. IBM is going to be there. Inflection's going to be there. Really awesome news on Inflection. I did confirm an interview for early November. So we are gonna be talking to the CEO here on this channel. So mark your calendars and I'm um, looking forward to hearing more about that SPAC and merger and their company. Troy Jensen, Cantor, Fitzgerald, who had initiated coverage on Quantum and given some uh, price targets. I'm looking forward to potentially meeting Troy at this conference. Uh, there's a lot of people here. As you can see, the CEO of Rigetti is going to be there as well. And Andy Lieber, the CEO of Arcit Quantum will be there. Paul Lipman of Inflection and Sandbox AQ. I will be doing a few smaller kind of like mini interviews there as well with some of the smaller startups as well, just to kind of hear what they're doing. And that will include Orca, computing and yeah, it's just a, it's just a full schedule. Lots of awesome speakers. I'm really looking forward to getting to meet some of these people in person. Of course, we see Ion Q's there, Amazon's there. It's, it's just a, gonna be a fun conference. What is going on with quantum? Well, today we saw again, some more money move into quantum cybersecurity. So QNCCF, Quantum Emotion, is actually now in a breakout range. We'll look at the press release later in the video that I think helped boost Quantum Emotion past its all-time high. Inflection, CCCX, had a 7% day. The market wasn't super good. A lot of high beta stocks were selling off, so it was impressive to see some of these stocks still end green. BTQ up 5%, ARCID up 5%, and CLSQ closed up 5%. Now, big asterisks, yesterday there was some massive sell-off. So we're gonna look at the candles. A lot of these candles are recovery candles um, or recovery percentages, not necessarily um, a fully recovered from where they were when the market was at its highs. Speaking of the market, we did have a bunch of chop in the morning, but we did end green all, all the major indices, including the S&P up half a percent, Dow up half a percent, and NASDAQ up half a percent. The main catalyst for some optimism in the wider market was President Trump eased worries of further trade escalation with China while regional bank stocks began to recover from significant losses. There was some concern about regional banks. Everyone's favorite part. We're going to jump into the charts and see what the charts are telling us. So we did have one heck of a week and we're going to look at hourly candles and we're going to see we're going to start with Churchill Capital Group. That's the SPAC merger that's happening and when inflection merges with Churchill Capital, they're gonna uh, basically change their ticker symbol. So buying the stock now is essentially buying inflection when the 
SPAC when and if the SPAC merger goes through and it's complete. So we can see that the stock peaked at 27 and we had a pretty significant downtrend posting lower highs from the peak of the candle to the bottom. There's a 33% flush out here and the lowest price for CCCX probably said C too many times. 19 or $18 there. Did have some recovery in the post market. The rally is continuing. I have added a bunch of shares to Churchill Capital in anticipation for inflection being added to the market. I think, and I'm going to, this is going to be a theme with all the charts we look at. I think this pullback is healthy. I was expecting it. And that's why in every video I make, including this one, just need to repeat even if I sound like a broken record, that quantum stocks carry a lot of risk. They are speculative by nature and they are high beta stocks, which means that they move more than the market. Sometimes they move up higher and sometimes they move down faster, a lot lower. So that gives two sides to the trade and gives the ability for these explosive gains. But there's also days like Thursday where there's the uh, explosive losses or the chef special, the shrink portfolio. Um, we all talk about growth portfolios, but nobody talks about shrink portfolios. Speaking of shrinking, let's take a look at IonQ. So IonQ had an absolutely horrible fall from 84.57 all the way down to 60 dollars and 69 cents. So 27% pullback. It happened very quickly this week. Just a lot of selling, 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 selling. And I want to zoom out even further and just look at the day candles. And we can really see on the day candles, we had a ton of optimism going all the way back to August and just a push up in the price, push up in the price. This trend was straight up essentially. And we've had a correction, some significant sell off. So if you look at this, you might want to look at 60 as a potential area for support. It's up to 64 and a half in post. Maybe the stocks are doing a little bit better after market in anticipation for the quantum conference. Who knows? And we're seeing that there's definitely some selling and profit taking. One thing to understand about all the selling that we've been seeing now we're looking at Rigetti. First, I think that pullback when a stock moves exponentially, which a lot of these stocks have, is healthy and it's fine. Two is a lot of the momentum drivers that were pushing up the stock, like rumors of the executive order, um, National Quantum Reauthorization Act, different sort of catalysts that we just had piling on each other. Those have slowed down a little bit, and that gives the stock room to breathe, retrace. It shakes out traders and non-serious holders. And then we also get to see where does the stock fall to and what are the support levels? And one thing I want to show you specifically with Rigetti, I'm going to turn on extended trading hours so you can see just how volatile this stock was. So in the pre-market this morning, we actually saw Rigetti for a moment available for $40 a share. So is that a preview of things to come? Is Rigetti going to retrace down further? Rigetti did fight its way out of the very bearish sentiment that it's been having recently. It's dropped from $57 a share all the way down to 43. We can measure that out and see what type of move that is. So that was a 25% fall. So Rigetti has definitely had some sell-off and correction. Now the question is, what do we predict happening at this point? So when stocks move a lot, it's good for them to come down. It's good for them to chill out. Could we see something like this, if I had to guess, I would say we could be moving down a little bit further and finding yourself in the high 30s and maybe just chopping around between the 30s, the high 30s and maybe the mid 40s. That would be a, a, a base case for me uh, with any new catalyst, with a, an executive order. I mean, I think the executive order still gives these quantum stocks in the near, near term a lot of potential upside. If that executive order is to happen, I think these stocks would recover um, and potentially make new, new all-time highs the way they've been moving. Pretty crazy to see. So we'll see what happens with Rigetti. What do you guys think? What's your price prediction for the end of the year? Do you think we're going all the way back down or do you think we're uh, gonna find support? I did like, if we look at the five-minute candles here, 
I did like that Rigetti was fighting all day to move back to almost that $50 position. It lost some steam, but you can see for a good chunk of the day, it was moving up um, and the trend on the five minute looked good. All right, D-Wave. So D-Wave had the good news about their contract sale system uh, situation. Um, I don't have time to go into that at this moment, but we can see that this stock topped at $47 and we've had 23% pullback. So, so far the correction has been the least for D-Wave, probably because it's had the most recent news. So it's fresh in investors' mind. It's moved a lot. It's definitely moving potentially down into correction. The question is, are we going to see this correction continue? And in my base case, I want to just stay conservative and say, yeah, maybe we could see D-Wave hang around to this 38, 35. We see a lot of price history on the day candles here. So maybe it'll find new buyers here. In a bullish case, maybe it recovers. I would think we would need a good catalyst to push it to all time highs. In LA, yes. So the keynote speaker for this upcoming Quantum and AI conference is Carlos Morea. And we can see that LAS actually had a candle at $8.80. So there's been a ton, and I mean a ton, of excitement for CLSQ, especially recently with their expansion into North American markets. Now, the issue with LAS or what's cooled down is a combination of high beta stock sell off and the fact that they diluted. But personally, I like the fact that they diluted. If we go and take a look, so CLSQ announced pricing of $200 million of registered direct offering and concurrent private placement. And I actually told the Discord, I don't mind this because if we look at all of the quantum stocks, most of them have kind of played this card and they have a much better looking profit viz and balance sheet because they have raised this cash and cash can make cash. You know, people forget that, that if you have a bunch of cash on the balance sheet. So right now, LAES is sitting on 121 million of cash, very little debt. And they've just, they're going to add basically 200 million. And you want to see that you want to see at least some runway. So, you know, the operations can continue as an investor. Even if we go into a bear market, they can continue executing on their core mission. And then you see companies like Ion Q who have diluted multiple times and you see that their uh, total assets are now over 1.35 billion. You see this with D-Wave, D-Wave Quantum added a bunch of cash through dilution. So they're almost sitting at a billion dollars, which gives them a ton of runways, $844 million of assets. And Rigetti as well has recently kind of played this same card. CLSQ has some very obvious catalysts coming up. They're going to announce their chip next week at the Q plus AI, their 7001 quantum resistant chip. And Carlos is going to be giving that opening keynote in front of all of those big names in quantum. So I think there will be some buzz and excitement next week for this ticker. So keep your eye on this and don't be surprised if we see LAS actually move up and potentially blow past this 850. I know I'm giving conservative estimates on the other quantum, but LAS has kind of had a life of its own. We're also hopefully going to see soon that the offering is done. And once the offering is done, then buyers tend to step in. I want to take a quick look at QUBT. QUBT, I know a lot of you are like, why don't you talk about QUBT, Maji? Um, I don't really like the, their style. I don't like that when they were almost at their all-time high stock price for the or 52-week stock price, they diluted for $750 million. I don't like the, their PR and they don't seem to be very concerned about being trustworthy and they're going to have like $1.2 billion on the book. So I could be wrong. It could be like a dark horse and it could surprise us all. But right now the stock's sitting at about $18 a share. I did buy a lot of bullish directional call options because I think when the dilution ends, I could see a potential breakout and this particular stock tends to move a lot like all at once when it does. 
and the move happens quick. Um, and I think we would we would be talking about a different price level for QUBT if they hadn't diluted. Okay, let's take a look at BTQ. So BTQ announced a quantum safe Bitcoin using NIST standard post quantum cryptography. This is a day old news. And BTQ has been struggling against the backdrop of a high beta sell off market. We can see that it has been trading kind of in this range around 1170. And, and it's kind of just been, uh, it did almost touch $14 a share. We saw that back on the 8th and 9th of the month, it was actually trading at 15, 16, 14. So we've seen optimism. We've seen this price push up on the stock, but recently it's been in a tighter trading range between this 12 and $11. And it's been very difficult in this type of bearish backdrop for it to move up and out of that range. We could see more from BTQ, so keep your eye on BTQ. Okay, and then Quantum Emotion actually busted through its all-time highs on this news. So Energy Plug and Malahot Battery Today Technology announced strategic alliance with Quantum Emotion on energy and defense, including NATO-aligned initiatives. So bullet points here. The partners will jointly design and deploy quantum secure BES, BESS architectures supporting Arctic defense installations and remote bases, portable field systems, providing secure power, utility skills, smart grids, incorporating quantum safe encryption with critical energy and IoT infrastructure. So how is QNCCF doing? Let's look at the four hour. And I think it's pretty clear from the four hour that we are now in a very fun place to be. We've busted through that all time high and now we are in what is called price discovery. So how high can quantum emotion go from here? We'll have to let the free market decide. All right, guys, I'm super excited for this conference. I'm gonna get this video polished up and out to y'all. And then I hope to give you some solid updates from the conference as well. Appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for everyone who has joined uh, recently as channel members as well. Uh, appreciate uh, doing those members videos for you. We'll see you in the next one. I hope you really enjoyed that content. It's my goal to provide quality content as much as possible and with as little interruption as possible. If you'd like to support my efforts in the channel, I offer three different membership options. It's super easy to sign up and it starts at just $4.99 a month. And you just click the subscribe button and you can learn more.